Yeah, we'll be uh, we'll be led to us by Ruby. Miss Kadapan, please lead us to open prayer. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your love and care. Thank you for all the blessing thou showered upon us. Please help us for a lesson for day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, good morning, everyone. So I would like to congratulate uh, all of you because um, you were able to submit your team activities, your team, uh, your, your team output uh, last week. Week. and I'm glad good morning sir good morning Harriet I am glad that um, all teams okay all teams were able to submit equality output as regards uh, summarizing the four four um, primary sources in Philippine history and uh, special mention to team H okay uh, team H got a perfect score Okay, that is um, that is the team. Uh, team members include Beverly, Justin, Eris, Marjorie, Daniel, Fiola, Sarah, Mark Lester, Jeanette, Micah, Joy, and Laila Camille. So they got the perfect score. Okay, in the first team activity which we had last week, meaning to say, uh, they were able to provide a good uh, a good input for each um, for each for each element of the summary matrix which they have to complete. Uh, though the other three teams got a good score because uh, I, already, I also have seen how they worked hard, how they communicate with their members and how they plan with their members just for them to complete the team activity. Uh, it's a good score though, uh, but, but um, there are things which the other teams, for other teams there are things which you have to improve as regards uh, as regards the way you have the, the way you have identified the most significant part or the most significant statement in the different analysis papers. Okay, so we will start with our first discussion on the first primary source in Philippine history, and that is Antonio Pigafetta's first voyage around the world. Okay, so allow me to share the screen for our presentation. Okay, so for our lesson two, we will be we, we will be dealing with uh, the content and contextual analysis of selected primary sources in Philippine history. And as you have read in uh, as you have read in the overview of lesson two, you have seen there that there are eleven primary sources that we have to that we have to look into that we need to understand. So for us to be given a good glimpse or a good understanding of Philippine history based on the perspective of those eyewitnesses of the said events. So we'll do content and contextual analysis. Here we just have a review of what you're expected of in this lesson too. Um, as we have said here, we are to identify the historical importance of the different texts for the different primary sources. And we are to examine the author's main argument and point of view why such a paper or why such historical source has been written. Uh, our intended learning outcomes are the following. That first, you are to analyze the context, content, and perspective of the different kinds of primary sources. Please take note that in the different uh, analysis papers which I posted in our LMS course, um, the, the analysis paper are divided into into parts. The first one is the introduction, that, that's about the overview of the source. Uh, the next part is about the background of the author. The, we really need to understand who the author is uh, para, ma, para maunawaan natin pinanggagalingan kung bakit naisulat niya ang nasabing basis. And uh, the, after, after the author's background, we have the historical context, that is contextual analysis, okay? Uh, yan yung yan yung titignan natin yung mga pangyayari bago nangyari yung sa ating naitalang uh, naitalang bahagi ng bahagi ng nakaraan then after that we do content analysis what what are the what are the historical events being narrated by the set source then after the after the content analysis we have the historical relevance 
Okay? Ano yung ambag ng nasabing batis sa kasaysayan ng bansa natin o kasaysayan ng Pilipinas at yung pinakahuli ay yung, uh, yung kontemporaryong kahalagahan o yung kontemporary relevance ng nasabing batis o nasabing document. Then the second learning outcome is for you to determine the contribution of the different kinds of primary sources in understanding the grand narrative of Philippine history. And last one is to develop critical and analytical skills with exposure to primary sources. So these are the intended learning outcomes for lesson two. And the learn and the performance based assessment, okay, this is what you, this is what you did last uh, last week, that you have to complete an analysis paper to to discuss a select primary source in Philippine history. Please take note that there are eleven there are eleven uh, eleven uh, primary sources that we are to study, and you would be expected to complete uh, three analysis, uh, three summary papers, and the first one has just been done last week. So there are two more analysis papers, a summary of analysis papers uh, uh, in this lesson two. Then the following activities are are things that we we, we will do in this lesson. The first one is what we are doing now, uh, the Google Meet discussion. And after that, you also did this. Uh, you also you also did the first one last week, as I said, the uh, summarizing select primary sources. And uh, next time, our uh, next next meeting maybe or this week, you would be asked to edit a shared Google form. And uh, the last one is a quiz. Okay, there would be there would be a quiz after we discuss uh, these four uh, these four um, these four primary sources. Okay, so we start first with the first source, and that is uh, Antonio Pigafetta's first voyage around the world. So we, we start first, please take note that um, the, the country or the Philippines had a long and arduous history, and uh, the details of Philippine history can be seen in numerous books by different authors. That's the documentation of Antonio Pigafetta's Magellan's voyage around the world. Uh, we said that Magellan was the one who rediscovered the Philippines. Uh, it, it is inappropriate to say that Magellan discovered the country, but rather his, uh, historians would agree, or historians, uh, histor yeah, historians would agree that Magellan nearly rediscovered the Philippines because the, Philipp uh, the, the country has existed prior to the coming of the Westerners or to the coming of um, the explorers specifically the Spaniard or the Spanish explorers, should I say. So, um, it is but appropriate that we have to understand the chronicle of Pigafetta. Pigafetta then was the, was the one who have recorded or who, who is the chronicler of Magellan's voyage. Kasi nung unang panahon, kapag merong paglalayag, ay meron din isang, merong pari na kasama, maliban sa pari ay meron din manunulat na kasama, para ilagay o isulat o itala ang mga pangyayari doon sa nasabing paglalakbay. Okay? So, Antonio Pigafetta was the chronicler of the said expedition. And uh, uh, please take note that uh, it was uh, Pigafetta was one of the survivors of the challenges and catastrophes that the expedition encountered along the way and he even got wounded in the Battle of Mactan. Uh, we, we also have learned in Philippine history that, um, that Magellan was killed during the Battle of Mactan, okay, but who killed Magellan uh, is still a, still a debate in Philippine history. We do not know whether it's Lapu-Lapu or not, but certainly uh, it is associated to Lapu-Lapu because uh, the Battle of Mactan would tell us that it was that Lapu-Lapu was the leader then of the Filipino tribe who fought against, uh, against the group of Magellan. Um, please take note that uh, it's also wrong to say that it is also wrong to say that Magellan circumnavigated the world because he was not able to circumnavigate the world because uh, pagdating niya pa lang sa Pilipinas ay napatay na siya doon sa nasabing Yabanan. So it was the survivors of uh, it was the survivors of the said expedition who were able to who were able to circumnavigate the world. Um, doon sa pagbalik nila sa Espanya, it's already Sebastian Del Cano, the assistant, uh, the assistant of Magellan, who was able to lead uh, the survivors of the said uh, expedition, and uh, it was his team who was able to circumnavigate the world. But certainly, in the context, uh, looking or understanding the context of this, uh, the context of this part of history, uh, please take note that 
a leader is always recognized when it comes to the achievement of his team. Kaya nababanggit lagi ay si Magellan na naka, nakaikot sa buong mundo dahil nga siya ang leader nung nasabing expedition. Okay? At nasasabi din na ang pumatay kay Magellan ay si Lapu-Lapu dahil nung panahon na iyon ang leader nung nasabing uh, tribo, ng Pilip, uh, tribo, uh, tribo, Pilip, uh, tribo ng mga Pilipino na lumaban kay Magellan ay si Lapu-Lapu. So that's the context that we have to understand. Okay? Kaya nga di ba in the previous meeting, in the previous meeting, in the first part of our discussion we said that the history uh the history is about winners okay history is about winners uh because it is defined as such because everything that everything that uh, everything that uh, all the uh, all the significant events that that took place all the important events that took place in the past was usually uh, being credited to uh the prominent people or even the leaders of um the said um events or the said happening now we proceed to the context analysis. Okay, paano nangyari na nagkaroon ng paglalayag ang mga ang mga Kastila sa Pilipinas at bakit? Okay, at bakit sila naglayag? Ano ang kanilang mission? Ano ang dahilan kung bakit kailangan maghanap sila ng ibang lugar? Okay? O pumunta at, at paano nakarating sila sa Pilipinas? Okay, these these are the context that we have to understand in this document. Please take note that uh, the 16th century European economy was mercantilist. When we say mercantilism, uh, wealth is measured based on the accumulation of bullion or precious metal. So it's the accumulation of gold, accumulation of uh, accumulation of important metals or uh, metals of significance. Okay, that characterized uh, the 16th century uh, Euro or European economy. Um, Please take note also that the 16th century Europe was dominated by the Holy Roman Empire. Okay, the Holy Roman Empire. It's called the Holy Roman Empire because uh, they they recognize the Pope. Okay, they recognize the head of the church, okay, head of the Catholic Church as uh, their leader, and that's why uh, it's also through this that we could understand. We have to understand na isa sabi natin kanina na lahat ng mga expedition na lahat ng paglalayag ay mayroong kasamang pari because the purpose of the purpose of uh, the purpose of both Portugal and Spain then in looking for new lands in exploring new lands exploring new places is for them not just to look for not just to look for uh, for resources for for yeah for resources but also to uh, propagate uh, the Christian faith okay so, please take note that it was also during the 16th century that um, it was during the 16th century that there's there's a uh, there's an immense need, okay, for spices, okay, mga pangrekado, okay, may mga pangailangan sa pang sa mga rekado ng mga panahon na iyon at napaka napaka importante ang mga rekado ito para mapanatili ang mapanatili ang ang kapanatili ang mga pagkain okay at mga iba pang mga uh, iba pang mga lutuin ng mga panahon na iyon at nakita dito uh, ang ang spices tumutisa ay nakita nila na marami sa Asia okay the spices uh, that there's there's rich uh, there, there's rich of uh, there are rich spices in Asia uh, para nagsimula ito noon sa ano sa sa um, uh, doon sa um, prosada na nangyari noon okay at dahil maraming mga pinadalang mga 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 kawal doon sa nasabi prosada sa bahagi ng bahagi ng ano bahagi ng Middle East or the or the North Central Asia okay kaya na discovered din itong mga spices na ito at uh, dahil nagkaroon ng pagdiskubre ng spices sa Asia at uh, nagkaroon ng nagkaroon ng nagkaroon ng isang nagkaroon ng ng matindihang paghahanap pa ng lugar sa Asia na makapagbibigay o kung saan matatagpuan ang mga rekado ito kasama na dito ang uh, China, India at ang Persia. Persia is the old um, uh, Persia is the old Iran. Okay, Persia is the old Iran. Okay? So and at the same time, maliban doon sa maliban doon sa Kusada, 
para lo descubrir de una recado dahil dun sa Silk Road. Uh, silk is parang, uh, this is, uh, this is the main product, okay, this is the valuable product of China, okay, during that time. At ito yung pinaka, ito ang sabi nila ang silka, ang pinaka, ma, ma, ang pinaka mamahaling tela ng mga panahon na iyon, at ang silka ay ang tela ang ginagamit lamang ng mga mayayaman o yung ng mga maharlika ng panahon ito. Uh, kaya naman, um, kaya naman maliban sa silk or discovery sa China, ay kasama na rin dito yung iba't ibang rekado na nagdiscovery sa nasabing lugar. Okay, so in the map here, okay, you would see the silk road. Okay, ito yung, ito yung route na, na uh, ito yung route na ginagamit ng mga, mga explorers, okay, when they, when they are to look for, okay, when they are to look for or transport or, uh, yeah, look for a transport for silk and at the same time uh, looking for spices in Asia. Okay, Asian goods reach Europe either via the silk road or the Arabian Italian trade route. Both are expensive and oftentimes disrupted by wars and natural um, calamities. Okay? So, um, since land routes were expensive during that time, so uh, they, they are having, they, they, they trade, they do trade of silk, they do trade of spices using the, using the land route or land route, as, they have, uh, as some would mention it. Okay, during that time, but considering that uh, land routes or land routes are too expensive, okay, uh, it was it was that it was that reason why Portugal, okay, why Portugal explored the ocean as an alternative way to the Spice Islands. Okay, so sabi ng ano sabi ng Portugal, uh, maybe we have to consider uh, making use of the of the um, of the seas or ocean to explore for to explore for uh, to explore for uh, to explore for alternative way to reach uh, the spice islands or areas where we could find these precious spices. Okay, so it was Portugal who started. It is Portugal who started navigating the world through oceans and seas. So nagkaroon ng ano? Nagkaroon ng nagkaroon ng matinding ano? Matinding. Nung nagsimula ang ano? Nagsimula ang nagsimula ang Portugal ng paghahanap ng spices gamit ang karagatan, okay, para nakita rin ito ng, ng Spain na pwedeng gayahin at pwedeng gawin din at na pwede rin nilang gawin. Kaya nagkaroon din ng, nagkaroon ng conflict, okay, nagkaroon ng contest between Spain and Portugal in discovering new land. So parang ginaya din ng Spain ng Portugal in making use of the, the ocean as another route going to or in discovering new land for the spices. At dahil nagkaroon ng conflict, um, the Pope, okay, the Pope has to come in, okay, para walang masyadong gulo dun sa nagsasabing uh, dalawang lugar o sa Spain at saka ng uh, Portugal. So, uh, it was because of that that the Treaty of Tordesillas, the Treaty of Tordesillas uh, has been signed by the two um, by the two uh, countries, uh, the competition between Spain and Portugal became heated enough that the two countries had to get the Pope to divide up the new world into parts that would be uh, that would be Spanish and part of them would be Portuguese. And this is what we call an agreement or a pact between the two. And this pact or agreement is called as the Treaty of Tordesillas. So, kung makita niya dito sa mapa na ito eto yung ano eto yung pagkakahati okay eto yung pagkakahati ng pagkakahati ng uh, ng baking okay uh, nang sa ganun ay maiwasan yung maiwasan yung competition uh, between Spain and Portugal so it was in 1494 that the Treaty of Tordesillas um, the Treaty of Tordesillas has been signed by the two nations of the two countries okay so kung makikita dito is I'm looking at the map, um, ang pagkakahati ay ganito, that areas or lands, okay, any, any land to be discovered in the, in the, uh, in the western hemisphere, okay, will be given to Spain, and in the eastern hemisphere, is that for Portugal, okay? Ang naging, ano, ang naging demarcation line ay etong dito sa may, uh, the demarcation line 
ay dito sa my international uh, oh, yeah, international date line. Yung natawag natin international date line na yun. Okay? So, yan ang naging demarcation line ng pagkakahati noong uh, lugar o pagkakahati ng date date para sa Espanya at para sa Portugal. Okay? So, kung titignan natin, originally, Philippines is supposed to be for Portugal. Pero paano nangyari na ang Espanya okay, ang nakarating sa Pilipinas at hindi ang Portugal? Okay, titignan natin yan. Okay, titignan natin yan as we are to, as we are to, to uh, discuss this primary source on Tigafeta's first voyage around the world. So this is the old map of the Philippines, okay? Uh, this is the old map of the Philippines. So kung makikita ninyo dyan, nandyan yung, uh, nandyan yung um, Islas de los Ladrones, okay? And even the, uh, this, is, this is the original uh, area, the original place where uh, Magellan's uh, team, okay, Magellan's team is supposed to discover, supposed to, to look for spices. Pero tignan natin sa kwento later doon sa ating pagkakatalakay kung paano mapunta sila sa Pilipinas. So we proceed to the content analysis of this, uh, of this uh, historical source. Okay? So this, is the, this map is the first round the world voyage by Magellan and Sebastian Elcano. By, by Ferdinand Magellan and Sebastian Elcano. Kung makikita ninyo, ganito yung route niya. The, the blue one, uh, the, the, the blue one, the violet right so yeah violet then the pink line okay this is the violet line and the pink line so they started in Seville, Spain okay uh, then uh, this one is the route taken by Magellan expedition taken by Magellan okay so from from Spain okay uh, they they made use of this uh, they they traverse that of the Atlantic Ocean okay tumating dito sa may gilid ng ano, ng, dito sa may Cape Perias of South America, okay, at 1519. So, in December 13, 1519, nakarating sila sa Santa Lucia, Santa Lucia, uh, now Rio de Janeiro. In Rio de Janeiro. Then, after that, of, after of December 13 of 1519, they, uh, they reached that of in October, November 1520, they reached the area of uh, a strait, okay, a narrow, a narrow body of water, which is called the strait, okay, uh, connecting that of the Atlantic Ocean and Pacific Ocean. That's why it is called as uh, Magellan Strait. So it was them who discovered this. It was Magellan's team who discovered this narrow narrow body of water connecting the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean hence it was named after him okay tinawag na tinawag na Magellan Strait then after that okay so they were able to uh, they were able to cross the Atlantic Ocean and was able to I uh, was able to reach Pacific Ocean then tutuloy natin yung violet na iyan nandiyan yung line going to this area and that is part of the Philippines so it was in the arriving Philippines in March 1521. So how many years is that? Uh, we have 15. They started in 1520. Uh, 15. I don't know. In 15, uh, 19. Okay, 1519. Then they reached the Philippines in 1521. 1921. That's three years. Okay, three years in the making before they reached the Philippines. Okay, in the Philippines. That's for they are this is Philippines. Now, nagkaroon ng ano dyan? Nagkaroon ng nagkaroon ng labanan, the Battle of Makta, namatay na si Magellan dyan, okay, at nakalaban niya itong si Lapu-Lapu, okay, then, then bumalik si Sebastian Del Cano, okay, yung team ni Sebastian, kasama si, uh, kasama si Pigafeta, ang tawag Pigafeta, at sila ang nakabalik, okay, dito sa Spain. Kaya tama lang na sinasabi natin that Magellan did actually circumnavigate the world, did, did actually did not circumnavigate the world, but it's really Sebastian Elcano and the survivors of the said expedition. So, dito na sila dumaan sa Indian Ocean, Borneo, Indian Ocean, papunta sa Cape of Good Hope in Africa, then going back to Spain. Okay, so ganun yung, ganun yung sinabi natin. Ganito yung class and ship nila doon. Ganito yung, ano, yung round the world voyage of Magellan and Elcano. Now, please take note that um, 
in understanding or in understanding whether which islands did this uh, which islands did this um, did this uh, did this expedition team reach in the Philippines? Okay, we have to understand the latitude and date. Tapos sinabi din natin latitude, ito yung sinasabi natin, sa, ito yung linya sa ano, yung parallel lines in the parallel lines, uh, the, uh, parallel lines in the, the parallel lines, and even the, uh, the meeting of the parallel lines and the uh, vertical lines in the globe, that makes the, that makes the, the latitude. Ito yung, yung panukat natin, kung panukat natin para masigurado natin kung saan nakalagay sa mapa yung nasabing lugar o yung nasabing isla. Pag sinabi naman natin ni Lee, ito yung ano, ito yung uh, per kilometer for example. Ilang kilometers ang ilang kilometers ang, ang, ang nilakbay mo bago ka nakarating doon sa nasabing lugar and that is what we call as Lee. Usually, it is, uh, usually this is the old, ano, this is the old um, measurement but but we are referring to kilometers here. Okay, so Zamal is what we call as Samar. Okay, Samar in the in, in the present day Philippines. So they reach Samar, okay, 300 leagues from the islands of Ladroni. Okay, Ladrones Island. Okay, pakita natin yung Ladrones Island kanina. Ito yung Ladrones Island, Isla de las, uh, de las Ladrones. So they did 300 leagues, meaning to say, kung sabihin natin na per league there is, there is 3,000 kilometers. So 3,000 times 300, so ganun kalayo ang uh, Isla de, uh, de los Ladrones going to uh, Zamal or Samar. Okay, now, now Samar. Okay, tignan natin kung saan ang Samar dyan sa mapa ng Pilipinas. Okay, so that's it. Uh, we, we continue. And also, uh, they reach Mazawa. Okay, Mazawa is the present day di Masawa, an island in the an island in the southern part of uh, southern part of uh, I think that is Leyte, Leyte. Okay, Mazawa is nine degrees and two thirds degrees toward the Arctic Pole. Uh, the longitude is the Arctic Pole, one hundred and sixty two degrees from the line of demarcation and twenty five leagues from Aquada to Monhon. Twenty leagues from Mazawa to Katigan. Katighan is the present day Bohol, okay? Then 15 leagues from Katighan to Zubu, Zubu is the present day Cebu. To illustrate that, this is the map, okay? So, ito yung mapa. So, sabi natin dito parte, dun si Taas parte, sa mapa ni Magellan, ni Tigafeta, si Taas parte ni Islas Ladrones, hanggang sa dumating sila sa uh, Zamal. Zamal is uh, present day Samar. Where is Samar here? Okay? Samar, nasa ng Samar dito. Okay, we check where is Samar. Okay, this is Leyte, no? So this is, ano, this is Leyte, Southern Leyte. Okay, so Samar is here. Tama, this is Samar. Yeah, this is Samar. Okay, this, this, this map is Samar. Okay, so narating nila ang Samar. Then after nila narating ang Samar, nakapunta sila sa Mazawa. Okay, ito yung Mazawa, yung island in the southern Leyte. Okay, so this is Mazaw, Mazawa, Mazaw, or natawag natin, Limasawa. Okay, na nasa uh, island, uh, the southern tip of uh, Leyte. So ito yun. Then after reaching uh, Mazawa, dumating sila sa Gatikhan. This is Gatikhan, this is Bohol. Then after Bohol, they they proceed they proceeded to Zubu, which is Cebu, present day Cebu, this is Cebu. So ganyan yung route nila kung paano sila nakarating sa Pilipinas. Okay. Now, before we continue our before we continue our discussion, any question as regards uh, any question as regards uh, the, the the route of Magellan, kung paano sila nakapunta sa Pilipinas. Any question? Molly, welcome to our class. Sorry, uh, I the discussion was ongoing. That's why I was not able to add you. Any question as regards it? So, if it's a uh, the context is, it's because of the age of mercantilism that they are looking for precious metals. At dahil kung marami kang mga pambayad at mahal ang at, at importante o mahalaga ang spices, kaya naghanap ang mga Europeo ng mga spices sa iba't ibang lugar. At naapektuhan ito dahil sa Silk Road, silk road at dahil na at dahil na rin sa 
At dahil na rin doon sa krusada na nangyari na nangyari na nangyari na nangyari na yung At sabi natin dahil expensive ang land, ro- ra- land route, kaya uh, nag-isip, ang, nag-isip ang, ang Portugal ng, ma- ng madaling paraan at mas murang paraan para makahanap ng spices at ito nga ang gamit, gamit ng karagatan o gamit ng dagat. Okay? So, kaya nabuo yung tawag natin the age of exploration. Exploration is to look for new lands, to gather more spices, to gather bullions of metals and others. Okay? So, any question as regards the first part of our discussion? Any question? None, sir. Thank you, uh, thank you Micah, for responding. You may make it of the chat if you have uh, an intermittent or no internet connection. When you find the difficulty of connecting with our class now, you may make it to the chat box. Is there any other question? Ruby Miles, you might have a question. Ruby? Wala po, sir. Wala, okay. Baka may question si Kuya mo, si Marvin. <laughs> Okay, any other, no, none, no questions, no, no questions class. Uh, maybe we listen, to, we listen to Marjorie. Marjorie might want to ask a question. None, Marjorie, none. Um, Sarah, Sarah, you might want to ask any question, Sarah? Sarah, you might want to ask a question? None. Okay. How about a uh, Marjorie? I know I already have called Marjorie. How about um Za? Za, any question adding? Sir. Any question? Sir, eh, meron po, sir. Okay. Sir, after no man, after po no Magellan expedition na, uh, iba 239 po yung nag-voyage. Ilan na lang po yung nakabalik ng buhay? Uh, ilan na lang ang nakabalik na buhay? Uh, that yes, I am not sure. Uh, that I am not sure. Sila na nakabalik na buhay, okay. But certainly there are those who survived, okay. The set expedition is no discard of Pigafetta. Ang ang kilala ko lang na nabuhay is si Elcano, uh, Pigafetta, and the other one is the, the other the, the assistant chronicler. I forgot his name. The assistant chronicler who also survived the set expedition. Uh, ang, ang mahalaga dito is uh. I think it is a sabi natin na we identify. That's why that's why it's no longer it's no longer an issue in history kung ilan ang nabuhay, okay? Kung ilan ang uh, kung ilan ang nabuhay. Sabi ni Ezekiel ano daw 18 ang nabasa niya, okay? Sabi ni Ezekiel the chat. 18 po yung nakalagay doon. Sabi ng babasa talaga sila. But but in in understanding this historical source, it's no longer important for some historian kung ilan ang nabuhay. Ang pinaka significant uh, significant part dito, significant na uh, significant na na, na kailangan natin unawain dito ay yung sinasabi natin na the, the circumnavigation of the world. Okay? Yung yung pagkakaikot nila sa mundo at yung sinasabi natin na yung yung yung, yung significant part nito ay sinasabi natin na even if we are, even if the Filipinos are less when it comes to weapons, they were able to defeat Okay, the team of Magellan in the Battle of Maktan. Okay, yun yung pinakamahalaga. Okay, but of course, Ezekiel was able to answer, okay, Ezekiel was able to answer the, the, the question of Za when he said in the chat that uh, there were 18 who survived the said expedition. So, ibig sabihin, okay, ito lang yung, ito lang yung, yung ito lang yung nakabalik ng buhay sa nasabing, uh, sa nasabing expedition. You know, uh, if there's one lesson that we have to learn, Okay, in this expedition. Ang hirap ng ano, no? ang hirap ng paglalaya ng unang panahon. Don't you know that uh, even in the chronicler of Magellan, he even mentioned that they, they already have eaten uh, dahil sa mga bagyo na naranasan nila sa Karagatan, sa Pacific. Okay, naranasan nilang kumain ng ano, kumain ng, kumain ng daga dun sa barko, kumain ng mga tela, lumang tela, nang sa ganun ay mabuhay lamang sila. Okay, so yung, 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 ano ba, yung eagerness nila, Okay, the eagerness to the eagerness to look for new lands, to discover new lands amid the difficulty of not eating, of traversing, or even of even facing uh, different storms and others. Thank you, Ezekiel and Daniel, for answering the question. Ako kasi wala na ako pakialam kung ilan ang kung ilan ang nabuhay. 
Okay, I'm just selecting the significant part of the story. But that's a good question, Zach. And uh, thank, thank you, uh, Daniel and Ezekiel, for answering the question. So the, the A team that would include the system chronicler, um, uh, Pig of Feta, and that of El Cano. Okay, thank you, Zach. Any other question? Sir, sure, wala na po. Thank you po. Okay. How about the others? Any questions? Okay, none. So we continue our uh, discussion. Now we proceed now to the content, okay? On how how Figa Feta, how Figa Feta describe, okay? How Figa Feta describe our early ancestors. Okay, now, uh, sabi ni Figa Feta, the early Filipino uh, Filipino community has a senior or king or chief. Okay, ano yung description nila ng senior or king or chief? That this chief is matured old man in some encounters. Okay, usually mga matatanda. Okay, kaya ito yung sabi natin. Kung si Lapu-Lapu ang chief nila, pero bakit ang description natin kay Lapu-Lapu ay magkukuno, maganda ang katawan, okay, at saka parang 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 bata, tignan, okay, yung ating description o visual o visual visual uh, visual imagery of uh, Lapu-Lapu. Kaya siya sabi ni Pigafeta, usually yung kanilang chief, yung kanilang king ay matured old man in some encounters. Okay? Uh, you know, sa, yung Saita community, sa Peña Blanca, they still believe in the power of the elders. Kung sino pinakamatanda sa kanila, yung pinakamatanda ang sinuturo nilang leader. Okay? Some are a bit larger than his men and the finest looking man. So, pwede na gwapo sila pulapo. Kaya sa sabi nila, usually daw, ito yung pinakamalaking tao sa grupo, at the same time, a finest looking man. Okay? Some are painted, so they are tattooed. Okay, may mga tattoo yung ating mga chief. They wore gold earrings, so mayaman tayo sa gold noon. Sinabi rin niya ni Pigafetta na maraming mga, maraming mga ginto sa Pilipinas. Some have black hair and hung to shoulders, so mahaba ang buhok ng mga chief. Then head covered with silk or kerchief. Okay, yung yung nilalagay dito sa ulo, okay, that's what we call as kerchief. And usually it's, uh, it's uh, made out of silk. So, ganun kahalaga ang silka noon, no? Ang, ang silk, ang pinaka, ang tela ng mga mayayaman noong mga panahon na iyon. Kasi galing sa silkworm, okay, na talagang pinoproduce mismo ng mga silkworm, pinasabing tela. Wore cotton cloth, all embroidered with silk, which covered him from the waist to the knees. So, para nakapalda, okay, para nakapalda ang mga, nakapalda ang mga chief noon. Ang mga nakapalda na lamang ngayon sa Asia ay ano eh, Thailand, Myanmar, and Indonesia, nakapalda yung mga kalalakihan nila. Okay, sa Pilipinas, meron din, somewhere in Mindanao, yung mga nakapalda pa rin hanggang ngayon. Then, some have spots of gold on every suit. Okay, yung, yung, yung gold ceiling, sang itin, meron yung mga yan. I think yung mga lolo't lola ninyo, meron pa rin sila mga ganito. Meron pa rin mga ugali mga Pilipino na lalagay ng mga gold ceiling sa kanilang mga itin. Ganun kayaman. Kaya sino feature din yan sa Jessica Soho noon yung matanda na merong gold ceiling sa kanyang itin na gusto niya ipatunaw at ipa ibenta na lang para magkaroon ng pera. Okay, nung mga panahon na iyon ay mayaman talaga tayo sa dito. Some are perfumed with thorax and benzoin. Okay, benzoin is, another, is a type of uh, is a chemical, a uh, perfume okay, na ginagamit noon. Wear armlets and other rings for the fit. So meron yung armlets dito. May armlets yung mga chips. Tapos meron din mga rings between sa feet. Okay, usually may may mga ganun na mga panahon na iyon, sabi ni Pigafetta. Wore necklace of great value, great value because it's created out of gold. And, uh, okay, so yun yung mga seniors or chiefs. Ano naman description niya sa mga paralakihan, yung mga ibang lalaki na hindi senior or hindi chief. Uh, next, uh, they are naked with cloth woven from a part of a tree about their private, okay, about their private, private part. Okay, so it's woven, cross woven from a part of a tree. So, uh, mga balat, balat ng ano, balat ng puno ang gamit ng mga ibang mga lalaki. Then, dark, fat, and painted. Okay, tattooed. Dark, fat, and painted. Yung may iba daw fat. Okay, ang description niya dun sa senior, sa chip, and muscular. Sa mga ibang mga lalaki na hindi chip, ay dark, fat, and painted. They are anointed with their bodies with coconut oil as protection against sun and wind. So, nauso ng coconut oil noon. Nung kabataan namin, nung bata ako, ito, wala kaming lotion. Ito ang ginagamit namin yung coconut oil. Meron pa rin bang gumagamit sa inyo ng coconut oil sa balat? 
Okay. Mas mura kasi yan ng coconut oil. Tsaka maraming, don't you know that we are top producers of, ano, Philippines is the top producer of coconut, okay, in the world. Kaya yan, marami tayong mga product uh, related to coconut. Some have dark hair that hang to the waist, so mahaba din. Okay, hang to the waist, sobrang haba ng buko ng mga kalalaki yan noon. Ito, ito, tell me ito. Have their finishes, tears, from one side to the other near the head with a gold or tin bolt as large as goose heel. Okay? Alam na ninyo yan. Okay, masyadong dodo ito ay nakaka-eskandalo para sa atin. Pero ito daw yung mga ibang mga lalaki nung panahon na iyon, yung kanilang mga, sa, 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 sa bagong term natin ngayon, ito yung tinatawag na bulitas, sabi nila. Ito yung mga kalalaki yan daw ay merong bulitas. They have their penises pierced from one side to the other near the head, near the glance. The glance is the part of the, of the head of the penis. Okay, with a gold or tin ball as large as a boot heel. Ano yung dito yung boot heel? Okay, yung part yan ng, ng ano, part ng, ng isang, ng isang boot. Okay, isa dito rin yung, yung ganung kalaki na nilalagay doon sa head of the penis. For women, they are clad in three cloths from waist down. Okay, so nakapalda mga babae from waist down. Okay, walang damit pang itaas. Hair is black and reaches the ground. So other men reaches the waist. Ang mga babae reaches the ground pa yung haba ng kanilang buhok. They are as white and as large as the Spaniard. So malalaking bulas yung mga Pilipino noon, no? Kaya sabi natin maliliit tayo pero malalaking bulas din pala kasi description ni Pigateta, uh, women are white and as large as the Spaniard. Holes on their ears which are filled with gold earrings. So merong earrings. Okay? Merong gold earrings ang mga kababaihan. They constantly chew a fruit which they call areca, which resembles a pear, cut into four and wrapped with betel nuts or betel leaves. Ito yung tatawag natin mama o nga nga. Okay? So merong, merong mga ginagamit ang mga babaeng ganito noon pa. Okay? Women, women, uh, women, ito, this is quite scandalizing, no? Women age six upward, have their vaginas gradually opened because of the men okay sorry yan natin din natin ma, ma mabasa okay because of the men banatin ang kanya okay so look at this uh, sabi dyan, this is quite scandalizing. Women age 6, sabi ni Pigafetta, upward, have their vaginas gradually opened because of the men's penises. Imagine at age of 6, women are, women are being penetrated already by men. Okay? As described by Pigafetta. This is quite scandalizing. You know, even my other students, the previous semesters, would, would be scandalized by this. Ah, ganun pala, blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. But now, okay, uh, we, we, we value, you know, we value virginity, okay, when uh, we, the, the, the value that we give to virginity, okay, has been inculcated in us when Spain, okay, colonized the country because of that conservatism, okay? That the idea of being conservative is what we got from Spain. But in the early Filipino culture, okay, ito yung ginagawa na noon. Okay, it's quite scandalizing, no? Okay. How about the cultural milieu of the pre-colonial Filipinos? What does, what does the document of Sigafeta tell about a uh, culture of pre-colonial Filipinos? First is, uh, oh, sige, mamaya. Baka merong kayong ano, baka merong kayong tanong. Okay, we stop sharing. You might want to ask questions as regards to the description of Pigafetta about early Filipinos. Any question? Were you scandalized by the description? More joins. I need to more joins. Okay. Yes. Now, where, uh, how 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 do you find the description of Pigafetta about early Filipino about about our early Filipino ancestors? Oh, tignan natin yung ano yung yung reaction ni Prince. Prince, may reaction ka, Prince? Prince, may reaction ka about the description about our ancestors?
प्रिंस वेजिटेरियन स्कंडलाइजिंग kasi nga parang pariniwala natin di ba ang pariniwala natin likas sa mga Pilipino ang pagiging konserbatibo okay at ang pagiging ganito pero dun sa mga pre-colonial Philippines pala pre-colonial Filipinos they already have this kind of practices okay this kind of practices how about thank you Reg for sharing your thoughts about it how about Sara 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 Okay. So Nan, Emmanuel about you Emmanuel, any reaction? Eman? Eman, any reaction? Nan sir. Okay, thank you Eman. Lester about you Lester. Lester, uh, Lester please. Lester, were you one of those who got a perfect score in the team activity? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Any reaction as regards the first part of our discussion on how we can better describe our early ancestors? Sir, wala po. Wala. Hindi ko naman nagulat doon sa may pulitas daw. Sir? Hindi ko naman nagulat sa description ng mga kalalakihan daw ay merong pulitas. Sir, doon po na ako nagulat, sir. Ah, gulat, no? Okay, meron ko bang kilala no. merong mga ganyan pa rin? Wala na ito, sir. Yung mga akong, sir. Wala na naman. Okay. okay. Thank you, Lester. Um, how about the other? Okay, no, no more reaction. You know, continue our discussion. But please take note that we are discussing this because uh, this is this is part of what the of, of the things being mentioned by Tiga Peta. We proceed to uh, the culture of the Filipinos as mentioned in the Chronicle of Tiga Peta. Now, he said that uh, Filipinos have a practice of doing Thanksgiving for gratitude by okay, showing their thanksgiving and gratitude to 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 life itself and how do they do this sabi niya uh, filipinos or early filipinos raise flat hands ganyan they clasp hands they raise their flat hand, hands and face towards the sky and then turn to others that is one way of showing that they are that they are thanking okay that they are showing their gratitude to someone else okay How about for friendship? The friendship is called Kasi Kasi. It's a ritual of friendship wherein one has to shed a drop of blood. Ito yung sanduguan. I shed a drop of his blood from his right arm, right arm, and other will do the same. Okay, then partake each other's blood. So inumin nila ang namix na dugo ng bawat isa. That is Kasi Kasi o sanduguan or a sign of friendship. Then another is for, mar- for marriage, One can have many wives as they wish, but one of them is the principal wife. So, mga panahon na yun, pwede pala mag-asawa ng marami. Okay? Mono, uh, polygamous ang mga Pilipino ng mga panahon na yun. Yung mga lalaki, lalo yung mga, mga lalaki, na pwede magkaroon ng maraming asawa. Pero sa babae, dapat isa lang ang asawa nila. Pero sa mga lalaki, pwede mag-asawa ng marami. Pero merong isa na tinatawag na principal wife. Okay? Then on trade, Our ancestors have a custom that all ships that will enter their port should pay tribute. So, meaning to say, tax has already been collected or uh, has already been collected during those times. So, ito yung tiyatawag natin mga tribute. So, kapag pumasok ang isang ang isang barko, isang balangay, okay, sa sa Pilipinas, dapat magbabayad ito ng uh, ng karampatang uh, tribute o karampatang buwis. Okay? And this is how, uh, this is how, kaya nga sabi natin, no, Prior to prior to the coming of the of Spain in the Philippines, we already have early trades. We already have early trades with our uh, Asian neighbors or uh, with our yeah with our Asian neighbors. Kaya nga po na ano pag-aralan niyo, to na pag-aralan niyo sa inyong sa sa kaya sa ina Filipinas sa mga kayo na sa high school. Ano yata yata tawag na ano? Ano yata yata tawag na the Sri Bihayan Empire, the Majapahit Empire. Ayon uh, Sri Bihayan Empire, Majapahit Empire. 
ito yung empire na meron sa, ito yung imperyo na nabuo sa Asia, sa lalo sa Southeast Asia, noong mga panahon na iyon, nung hindi pa dumating yung panahon ng kolonialismo. Na ito, yung nagkaroon ng, nagkaroon ng trade, nagkaroon ng kalakalan ang mga, ang mga bansa sa Asia, papapalitan ng kalakalan, at dahil nagkaroon ng palitan ng kalakalan, nakarating ang isang imperyo sa Pilipinas na mula sa India, na mula sa India para bumuo ng, para bumuo, para bumuo ng, 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 para bumuo ng pamamahala sa Pilipinas. Ito yung katawang natin, Sri Bihayan Empire. At pagkatapos ng Sri Bihayan Empire, ay yung Majapahit Empire. Kaya ang sinasabi natin, okay, sinasabi natin dito na it's because of our early ancestors, we, uh, early trade, should I say, uh, the, the, uh, our early ancestors trade with uh, neighboring countries na nagkaroon ng palitan ng produkto, nagkaroon ng palitan ng flora and fauna. Ang sabi natin, flora and fauna, palitan ng hayo, palitan ng ng halaman, palitan ng mga gulay. Okay? Dahil sa kalakalang ito bago pa dumating ang panahon ng kolonialismo. Don't you know that, uh, don't you know that uh, eggplant, for example, eggplant, for example, is not really, uh, it's not really a vegetable in the Philippines. But that is a manifestation. The, the eggplant that we have now is a manifestation of our trade with that of the other neighboring countries and a manifestation of the contribution of the three, three Bihayan and Majapahit Empire in the Philippines. Dahil ang ano, dahil ang, ang, ang talong ay sadya ay nagbula sa India. Kaya kung makikita ninyo, ang, 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 yeah, ang, ang talong ay nagbula sa India. That's, just, uh, that, that's a vegetable originally found in India na dumating lang sa Pilipinas because of the coming of the Three Bihayan Empire or the Majapahit Empire. Okay? Ang tanong sa India noon ay bilog kaya ang tinawag, tinawag na eggplant. Nung dumating sa Pilipinas, siguro sa pagbabago ng klima at sa kung ano-ano pang ginadagdag para lang mong pagyaman ng pagtubo ng talong ay naging, pahar, naging pahaba na ang talong sa Pilipinas. Okay? Mga varieties niya meron ng mahaba. Okay? That is because of the early trade we have with India and other neighboring countries. Now, for festivities, our ancestors are heavy drinkers. Before the king drinks, he raised for Thanksgiving. He raised his flat hands towards the sky and then towards the person he is drinking with and the former extends his fist to the left hand towards the latter. Sometimes they have a meal that would last for six hours. This would explain why Filipinos are meal-oriented individuals. Marami tayong mga festivals and festivals and celebrations are associated with sharing of food. Okay, ganito tayo ka meal oriented, celebration oriented people, okay? Na lahat ng mga simpleng bagay na na-achieve natin sa buhay, mga simpleng tagumpay ay ating ipinagdiriwang gamit ng pagkain. Okay, this would explain how festive we are as Filipinos. How celebrate how celebration oriented we are as Filipinos and how food oriented we are as Filipino. Hindi pwede na wala kang pagkain kapag merong kang isinecelebra, merong kang ipinagdiriwang. Kahit simpleng, for example, kahit simpleng, kahit simpleng ano lang, kahit simpleng, uh, kahit simpleng, kaya nga tiwa mo, ka, ngayon lalo pa nabuo yung katawa ating mansari, anniversary, victory, because we are festival or celebration oriented individuals. Okay? Kulang na lang eh, basary pa, no? Kulang na lang, meron pang archery or sequencery or military, okay? Just to celebrate our achievement o yung mga maliging katagumpay sa buhay, okay? Next is for our food. Our ancestors eat umay. Umay is rice, coconut, meat, and fish. And drink uraka or arak, okay? A wine taken from palm or Coconut. So we have arak then, okay, your uraka, tawag noon, meat and fish and rice. Okay, so we are rice eaters. Okay, our staple food then, ever since, okay, is rice. Then animals and other produce, we have dogs, cats, swine, fowls, goats, rice, ginger, coconut, figs or banana, okay, oranges, lemons, okay, millet, panicum, sorgo, so so though I think it's parang sago ito, wax and gold. So these are the animals and other produce in the early Filipino community. For dwellings, we built up from, uh, dwellings are built up from the ground on huge spots of wood and touched with pig and palm leaves. So ganun yung bahay natin ng mga unang panahon, naka-elevate naka, naka siya. Okay, naka-elevate siya. Uh, the explanation is, 
uh, para para iwas sa mga iwas sa mga ano sa mga kalaban at the same time iwas sa mga wild animals. Okay? So, uh, before we continue, any any question on this part? Any question on that part? Kayo ba sa inyong mga bahay ba ay kayo pa rin ba ay ano food oriented individuals at ano yung mga sinaselebrate niyo ano yung mga pinagdiriwang niyo okay mga mga okasyon na pinagdiriwang niyo We listen to Penet Penet Sir Benet I'm um, celebrate sir Uh, gusto ko makita yung mukha mo, Bennett, kasi parang matagal na kasi hindi nakita. O, oh, Bennett, ano yung mga ipinagdiriwang ninyo na okasyon? Mari birthday. Ganun. Ibas sa birthday. Bennett? Sir, next time. Sapi ako, no? Okay. So, pasensya na. Sapi pa rin ba? Yes, sir. Okay na. Ay, okay, so, ben, for Bennett, they are, ano, they are, they are celebrating birthdays and others. Okay, about the others, ano yung mga occasion na celebrate ninyo? Sorry, sorry na. Sir? Uh, ano yung mga sinaselebrate niyo na occasion? Mm, paranos. Ha? Paranos yung before wedding. Ah, before wedding. Yes. Parang parang mm, before wedding. Official wedding before. Uh, yun mm. kasi yung kami. Oh, I think sa sa yun yung from Kalinga no. Yes. Sir. Oh, kasi sa Kalinga no marami yung mga celebrations no. Yes, sir. They do it. Meron pa yung mga dancers and others. That's how festive Filipinos are. Okay. So we continue our discussion. Now we need to share this screen. Okay. We proceed now to another part of our content analysis. Okay. On uh, on Christian names given to our ancestors. So. Uh, that the coming of Magellan is also the coming of Christianity in the Philippines. Okay, kaya nagkaroon ng first match, okay? Yung first match daw ay ginanap sa, sa Limasawa or Mazawa, okay? Later we will be discussing that in a separate part of our lesson. So yung mga ano, yung mga unang mga na convert into Christianity are the following. Si Raya Humabon, naging Don Carlos. Son of Raya Humabon or Prince of, uh, of Humabon is Fernando. Si Raya Pulambo naging Johanny ang pangalan. A Muslim was converted and was called as Christophero. Si Queen Amiha naging Johanna. Yung kanyang anak ay naging Katarina. Yung Queen of Mazawa, hindi Masawa, ay naging Elizabeth. So, yeah, well, this is our practice. No? When we convert someone into Christianity, they would, they would have to adopt a Christian name. And similarly with what happened in the... Uh, in the in the Philippines. Okay, kaya nga naging ito yung mga pangalan ng mga sinunang Pilipino no Carlos, Fernando, o kaya Katerina, Elizabeth, and others. Okay? Now, uh, uh, after the, the the main point here is the most important uh, the most important the most important or the significant, should I say, the most significant content of uh, of Chronicle of Magellan is about uh, how 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 our how our culture Okay, the, the kind of culture that we have prior to the coming of Spain. So, ibig patunay lamang nito na, patunay lamang nito na, our early Filipino ancestors have, the, have their civilization, uh, have a civilization of their own. Okay, meron tayong mga kultura, meron tayong mga ganito, mayaman tayo because of the years, because of gold, meron tayong mga resources, okay, hindi naman tayo, hindi naman tayo sobrang hirap na, na bansa noong unang panahon dahil we already did trade with, with China, even with India, with, with other neighboring Asian countries. So we proceed now to the historical relevance of uh, this document. The Pigafetta document gave a detailed chronicle of the significant events of the exploration of Ferdinand Magellan. Okay, tama naman yun. The significant events of the exploration of Ferdinand Magellan and the chronicle is an evidence that 
the world is uh, the world is um, the world is round that the world is not flat okay kasi paniniwala noon na ang ano daw ang mundo daw ang tig daw ay flat na kapag narinig mo ang dulo pwede ka bumagsak okay o pwede ka mahulo pero patunayan yan ni Tigapeta ng Tigapeta Expedition na hindi flat ang mundo kundi hindi patag ang mundo kundi ito ay silo okay the the chronicle of Tigapeta provided a description location and distances of the places visited thereby enhancing the knowledge of cartography at that time cartography is map study of map map making okay cartographer create map it's because of the description of Tigapeta, even the description of latitudes, the location, distances, and others. Again, the the, the number of uh, the number of days before they reach a certain a certain area or a certain place. Okay, and reach okay one's understanding of cartography or map making. Another is the chronicle contributed immensely to European historiography because it preserved okay and popularized the achievements of the Magellan Elcano expedition. Okay, yun na, yung, yung, yung padilang na patunayan na bilog ang, bilog ang, bilog ang mundo. Okay? And there was an evidence of agricultural activities of the, of the pre-colonial Philippines based on, uh, based on their produce. Pre-colonial Filipinos engaged in trade with neighboring countries. Okay? So, sinasabi ko na dati na meron tayong trade sa ating mga neighboring Asian countries prior to the coming of Okay. Dito rin patunay na meron na agrikultura sa Pilipinas because of our agricultural produce like coconut, rice, and others. Don't you know that when I attended, uh, when I attended the training in teaching revision Philippine history in Rasal, okay, uh, one of our professors, uh, one of our trainers or professors mentioned that the, the earliest, okay, that the earliest uh, rice hat, okay, ano ibig sabihin ng hat? That the earliest rice hat in the Philippines, okay, was uh, discovered or was excavated okay it was excavated in uh, in andarayan solana cagayan okay it was excavated in andarayan solana cagayan pag sinabi natin ha ito yung usually dry or, or usually dry outer covering of uh, outer covering of a certain seed so yung out yung, yung ipa yung ipa na tinatawag natin so yung mga rice husk daw na ito yung mga ipa Ang pinaka earliest na nahukay ay nahukay sa Andarayan. Pre ano to ha? Pre pre colonial uh, excavation. Ay nahukay sa Andarayan, uh, Andarayan Cagayan or Andarayan Solana Cagayan. So, dito natin mapapatunayan na ang Cagayan ay napaka napaka ano napakayaman pagdating doon sa pre colonial artifacts or pre colonial fossils that would testify, that would testify okay presence of early civilization in the Philippines prior its rediscovery by Magellan. Okay? Maliban doon, di ba, yung sabi natin yung Kalaw Man, o kaya mas matanda pa kaysa sa, kaysa sa Tabon Man in Palawan. So ito yung mga patunay. Tapos yung mga, mga sinuunang hayop pa na nahukay sa Gadu Solana. Okay? Yung mga, for example, yung mga remains ng rhinoceros and others sa Gadu Solana. Nahukay yan yung mga, yung mga, ano niya, mga fossils yung mga buto niya. So that would mean that uh, there might there might be there might there might be a, an early civilization an ancient civilization in Cagayan. And considering that, considering that most of early civilization uh, started or yeah started along river banks. Look, you look at this. In your world history, you have learned that Egyptian civilization started in the Nile River, along Nile River. Okay. Mesopotamian civilization is started in the Mesopotamia River. Indian civilization is started in the Indus River or, Gang or, or Ganges River. Roman civilization is started in Po River. Chinese civilization is started in Yellow River or Wangho River. Okay? So, or Greek civilization. It started in uh, in in I, I forgot the name of the river. Okay, but most of most of these civilizations, most of these ancient or early civilizations, started along river banks. That's why when I attended my first seminar in Pangasinan, I I was with it, 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 uh, it's a seminar for social science uh, teachers or social science educators, and one of the one of the speakers then was a professor in. Um, 
a professor in UP, and we had a chat when we visited the Hundred Islands. I had a chat with this old with this old woman, okay, a, a experienced historian. Sabi niya, Herbert, you might want to you might want to consider uh, writing or doing a research uh, of the possibility of the early civilization along Ilok the Bayan, Okabayan River. Please take note that the Bayan River is the longest and the mightiest river in the Philippines. That's the mahabang ilog sa, sa Pilipinas. Okay? Kasi ang mga mahabang ilog sa ibang bansa, doon nagsimula ang sibilisasyon. At sinasabi niya, hindi kaya nagsimula din ang sibilisasyon. Baka meron kang mahukay na, baka meron kang mahukay na the early civilization, patunay ng early civilization o, 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 o sinuunang sibilisasyon sa Pilipinas along, along Ilok the Bayan. And so, sabi niya, pero if you do, if you do study on civilization, it could take many years before you could be able to complete it. Sabi niya, mag- magbuho kayo daw ako simula sa Bella hanggang Apari. Okay? Para para makita kung meron mga, may, may mga fossils, may mga remains, may mga artifacts na mahukay na napapatunay ng early civilization. But now, uh, but now you look at na, you, you look at, at discoveries now, uh, or uh, discoveries of the archaeologists now. Ang sinasabi sa archaeologo, ang mga archaeologo, ito yung mga nagbuhukay. Okay? Ito yung mga nag-aaral ng mga, ng mga sinuunang gamit na mahukay nila sa lupa para patunay ng mga sibilisasyon noong unang panahon. Okay? So, tingnan nyo nangyayari ngayon. The Kalauman, okay, yung nahukay nga sa Andarayan, yung nahukay nga sa Gadu. Nagpapatunay ito na maaaring ang pinakaunang sibilisasyon ay nangyari sa, sa Luzon. Ay maaaring nangyari sa Kagayan considering that we have the mightiest and the longest river. Okay? The document also narrated the status of the Filipinos in warfare. The status that we are inferior when it comes to warfare. Kasi sinabi doon na ano lang ginamit nila, mga, mga pana, mga yari sa kaho, yari sa, yari sa, ya, wala pa masyadong yari sa bakal na, na, ano, na weapon ng, uh, ng early Filipinos noon. Then, manner of dressing and system of writing. Please take note also na maaaring itong sinasabi ni ano, maaaring, maaaring itong description ni Pigafetta because Pigafetta came from a 15th century, 16th century euro na medyo advanced na sila, na medyo may gamit ng metal. Sa Pilipinas, wala pa tayong masyadong ganoon. Kaya siguro ito ang kanyang tunin. Then the document narrated the conversion of early Filipinos into Christianity. Ito ata yung pinakamahalagang uh, relevant, pinakamahalagang, pinakamahalagang ambag ng ng chronicle ni Antonio Pigafetta because it's through this that we realize uh, that we learn about our conversion into Christianity. Now, a contemporary relevance niya is textbook writers use this book as their source of historical information every time they discuss the beginning of Christianity in the Philippines. Okay, the beginning of Christianity. So if that is 15, when was that? Okay, if that is 15, um, If that is in 1521, so ilang taon na ang Kristyanismo sa Pilipinas? O ilang taon na? 1521 na we, we, we were rediscovered. So ilang taon na sa tingin ninyo ang Kristyanismo sa Pilipinas? Ang Kristyanity sa Pilipinas. Ilang taon na? Almost okay. 500 years, sir. Almost 500 Thank you, Micah, for asking. Tama, almost 500. Parang kapa 500 lang natin, di ba, last year, no? Parang kapa 500 lang natin. Okay? Nung last year, 500 years. So imagine, we're 500 years of Christian nation already. Okay, are you thankful that we were converted into Christianity? Uh, in tanong ko, are you thankful that we were converted into Christianity? It's our five, more than 500 years of being a Christian nation. Are you thankful of, of, of that? Yes, sir. Because Bakit Christianity ba? is... Uh, um, Christianity, kasi, sir, is one of the biggest religion in here in Pil- Philippines. Tapos, parang lahat ng mga... Uh, tawag dito, mga characteristics natin is parang na-adapt natin through okay. Christianity pa. Okay, very good. Siguro, siguro sundun sa konteksto natin, siguro pag hindi tayo na-convert into, into the, uh, if you are not converted to Christianity, siguro yung practice sa mga early Filipinas, siguro ano, 
pwedeng ano, pwedeng pwedeng kung tayo na convert, pwede sigurong ano, pwede sigurong we are a Muslim country. Right? A Muslim country. Because our early ano eh, our 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 neighboring countries or most most of them are ano no, most of them are uh, most of them are uh do have Islam as religion. Okay? I think there are only two countries in the Philippines which is a nation ah uh, well, country in the Philippines. Country in the in Asia which is uh which is of Christian uh Christian uh which is of Christian religion. Uh that is ano, that is, is Timor, Timor Leste and the Philippines. Timor Leste is a tiny island in Indonesia. That Indonesia part of Indonesia yan, but because they, most of them are Christian, kaya they, they request that they hiwalay to Indonesia kaya siya ay isang pinakabago o separate na separate na bansa sa Southeast Asia, yung Timor Leste or East Timor. Please take note also that um Please take note also that uh, the document also show how rich our ano, it showed how rich our how rich our culture is okay during that time. Okay. Any other question? Any other additional information about this? You might want to add something based on your readings in the LMS. You might want to add something. Isha, Isha, baka meron kung gusto idagdag. Isha. And and also, um, the document also the document the Chronicle of Pigafetta has also shown us how hospitable Filipinos are. That we are truly uh, we are innately okay, we are innately hospitable people. Okay? Uh, because they welcome, di ba, nagkaroon pa ng peace, nagkaroon pa ng, ng, ng pag-welcome sa mga Katsila and others, okay? Nagkaroon lamang ng, ng ano, ng awa, nagkaroon lamang ng conflict with, between uh, Magellan's, uh, Magellan's uh, team and that of uh, Lapu-Lapu, okay, because of, because parang na-realize nila na, parang itong, 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 itong panic ni Lapu-Lapu, ang ayaw nila ng may foreigner, nasakupin ng mga foreigner, yung ano yung kanilang lugar. Okay, pero may mga may mga chiefs na gusto na na, mapa, na masakop ng mga Katsila pero yung grupo ni ni Lapu-Lapu ay ayaw. Okay? Na makontrol ng mga banyaga ang kanilang lugar. Okay? Do you also have Lapu-Lapu? Uh, who are our modern day Lapu-Lapu now? Yung ayaw ng ano, ito yung yung gusto nila yung gusto nila yung promotion o promotion of Filipino culture with no with no influence by 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 foreign culture but um but we pag pag ano pag ang tanong ko is kapag kayo ba tatanungin ano kapag kayo tatanungin um gusto pa rin ba ninyo na gusto pa rin ba ninyo na na kung kung halimbawa kayo ay bahagi ng sino unang mga Pilipino gusto ba ninyo na masakop ng mga banyaga Ha? No, sir. Mukhang may ka, mukhang dalawa na lang tayo na, ano no? Mukhang dalawa na lang tayo na nag-uusap. <laughs> mukha lang, mukha nga, sir. Ay, dalawa na lang. Saan mga iba? Okay. Anong sabot mo, may ka? Um, no, sir. Ayaw ko pong masak, ayaw pong masak ng mga banyaga, sir. Noon, kung sakaling pahagi um, ka. Yes sir kasi um parang yung kasing uh, story noon sir ng mga nung nasakop tayo ng mga banyaga so is parang nap, napaka saklap na dahil lahat, parang lalo na sa mga part ng mga babae sir oh. yung parang eh, yung mga dinig ng mga babae na ano uh, sir yeah that, that is true sometimes it's correct to describe that lalo na yung pagdating ng mga ano 300 plus years more than 300 years that we were we were colonized by Spain and how they abused okay our resources and, and our people during that time ah uh, siguro na sasabihin natin na ayaw kasi nga meron tayong meron tayong negatibong karanasan okay doon sa panahon ng kolonyal uh, panahon ng panahon ng mga Kastila sa Pilipinas marami kasi mas marami kasi ang mga naranasan natin hindi maganda ng mga panahon nila kaya siguro na sasabihin natin na nasabihin natin na sana hindi na lang tayo nasakop 
sana ay napanatili natin ang ating sariling ang ating sariling kultura, ang ating sariling mga ang ating mga sariling gawin noong mga panahon na hindi pa tayo nasakop ng nasabing uh, mga banyaga. Okay, don't you know that there's one country in there's one country in Asia na hindi nasakop ng mga banyaga, this is Thailand. Okay, never na ano yan. Never na nasakop, never na na-influence ng, ng foreign culture. Kaya nga sinasabi natin na Thai, Thailand is Thai is freedom. Okay? O free. Land of the free. Ang ibig sabihin ng Thailand. Never na nasakop yan ng mga banyaga. Sa Pilipinas kasi para marami tayong mga negatibong experience. Siguro kung wala tayong negatibong karanasan doon sa mga kolonyalista, mula sa mga kolonyalista, siguro hindi rin tayo nagsisisi na na nasakop tayo, hindi tayo nagsis, hindi rin natin masasabi na sana hindi rin natin nagpasakop sa mga banyaga. Pero dahil nga sa mga negatibong karanasan, kaya nasasabi din natin na nako, ang hirap din kasi, sana hindi na lang nangyari. Okay? Pero wala. Whether we like it or not, okay? Meron pa rin naman positibong nangyari, meron pa rin mga positibong yes, effects. Marami rin naman yes. okay? Marami pa rin naman, lalo ni Christian. Mga advance, okay. mga benefits rin naman na nakuha natin sa pagsakop nila sa pagsakop nila parang ganoon so, lalo na yung mga cultures sir eh. yeah that that cultures true. tama my god that's, that's very true so parang na, na refine din tayo no in a way by the culture of the western uh, i think um there's someone who is active a while back uh, any anyone who would like to share their thoughts as regards our discussion aside from my you know it would be good that you share if you have good internet connection, it would be good that you share through chat or through through voicing out your opinion or insights about about, uh, about our lesson. Kasi mga kapek ko yan, latest po ko-compete ko ng grade ninyo. Hindi man graded to mga ito, pero naaalala ko kayo, okay, kapag mukokompete na ako ng grade ninyo, kasi nga, you're engaged in our uh, in our video conference discussion. Okay, about the others, you might want to you might want to participate in our discussion. Uh, I and, and Micah, okay, has been doing conversation. You might want to join our conversation. But the others, you might want to join our conversation. Laila, Laila or Laila, Camille. Camille, you might want to join our conversation. Sir, pakisabi naman kay sir. I see, pakisabi naman kay sir. Di ako maka-join. Super hinanet dito ngayon. Okay. Uh, Laila, sorry. Chappie po, sir. Ano po iyon? Okay. You might want to share your thoughts, your insights, uh, Laila, as regards our discussion today. Sorry, Bennett, and Pisati daw, medyo mahina ang connection dito sa office. Okay? Sir, dito ko na lang po sabihin. No? Sige, Laila, please uh, encode, what, uh, encode your insight okay, in our chat box. Angelica? Angelica? And okay, we'll wait for what Laila would share us. Uh, yung mga iba pa, nandiyan pa rin ba kayo? Mga uh, kapatid, nandiyan pa rin ba kayo, mga kapatid? So, kasi may ka, nandiyan pa? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you, Fiorina. Antayin natin yung sabihin ni Laila. Uh, yes, uh, ano itong nagsabi siya? Yes. Okay, so we'll wait for maybe the insight, we'll wait for the insight of Laila in the chat box. Okay, uh, habang habang ano yan, habang, habang inaantay natin yung sinasabi ni Laila, yung gusto nang ibahagi ni Laila. Uh, later on in our, in, during the midterm, we will also be discussing about kung, kung saan ba talaga nangyari yung unang misa, okay, yung inakunang misa sa Pilipinas. Kasi meron mga konteksto na meron mga nagsasabi na nangyari daw sa butuan. Okay, at hindi raw sa Mazawa. Kasi sa Butuan, merong tinatawag na Masaw. Masaw, lugar na Masaw. Tinatawag na Masaw sa Butuan. Na they are claiming that the first mass in the Philippines took place in Masaw, Butuan, and not in Limasawa or Mazawa. Yun naman sinasabi nila. That's part of the debate 
which you will be doing later during the midterms. Okay? Kasi nasabi kasi nila na ano na doon daw talaga nagsimula ang ano ang doon daw talaga ginawa ang unang musa. Pero malinaw naman doon sa malinaw naman sa, sa sinasabi ni Pigafetta na ang description niya based on the latitude, based on the lakes, based on the based on the geographical description of Pigafetta, malinaw na nangyari ang unang misa nung ya, ang unang misa sa Limasawa, at Limasawa is an island in the southern part of uh, uh, just just below the southern part of Leyte. Nasabi ni Laila, my thought regarding the discussion is that if the Spaniards didn't colonize our country, we can have our religion today. That's very true, Laila. And sobrang relevant yung sa Filipino values na meron tayo ngayon, katulad na pagiging conservative at religiosong tao. Yeah, that's very true. We are too religious, no? We Filipinos are religious, okay? Alam niyo ang totoo, sa totoo lang, ang ang ginawa ng ng, ng Spain para makuha nila ang, ang attraction, para makuha nila ang attraction natin sa sa Kristiyanismo, ang ginawa nila ay ginamit lang nila yung yung ating kultura para i-integrate, para i-integra yung ating uh, yung ating yung ating ano, yung ating yung ating kultura. For example, um yung pizza, we, we've been doing uh, we've been doing ano eh may mga pista tayo na na tinagdiri mga sa Pilipinas. Actually, sabi nga natin we are we are celebration oriented, we are we are feast oriented people. At isinama 'yun, isinama 'yun ng mga ng mga prayle, ng mga misyonero, okay ng mga ng mga ng mga pari ng mga panahon ng Pasila doon sa kanilang doon pa, para ma-attract ang mga Pilipino. Okay, kumbaga, dati-dati na tayong mga pista. Ang ginawa lang ng mga ang ginawa lang ng mga prayle ay They, they try to integrate yung pistang ito sa paniniwa sa 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 ating faith. So kumbaga, uh, we celebrate harvest before. Ngayon ang ginawa ng mga ang ginawa ng mga prayer ay dinamit nila yung mga santo, okay? Ito mga santo na ito makakatulong sa inyo sa inyong mga harvest. Ito mga santo na yung makakatulong sa inyong mga komunidad nang sa ganun ay lalo pang lalo pang maging lalo pang maging maunlad, lalo pang maging progresibo ang inyong komunidad, ang inyong lipunan. Kaya pinasok nila ang mga patron saints. Kaya nga ngayon, we celebrate we celebrate as a community and we celebrate because of the presence of our patron saint. At may mga pagkain na hinahanda dahil dati na tayong new oriented. So, pinasok lamang yung mga patron, yung mga santo, ng mga, ng mga prime at sila para na sa ganun ay mahikayat tayo na mahikayat tayo na maging kristyano, na maging mga katoliko. Okay, that's a good uh, input, uh, Leila. Okay? So pati yung mga ano, pati yung mga pati yung mga paniniwala natin, tama yan, napaka-religyoso natin mga Pilipino na okay yung paniniwala natin sa mga santo, yung mga katulong sa atin ng mga santo para may para 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 matupad yung mga mga kinapanalangin natin and uh, Okay? Thank you uh thank you Laila for that. Okay, any other question? Any other sharing? Eric, you might want to share. Eris. Um yes sir. Um sir I, I agree. I agree po dun sa sinabi ni Leila sir na without the Spaniards na nag-colonize sa atin um uh, parang hindi na hindi na hindi ma-introduce sa atin yung Christianity na sobrang nakakatulong sa atin ngayon di ba? Gaya din nung sinabi ni Mike sir na dahil sa religion natin parang yung character natin nagiging angkop ganyan sir. Yan pa sir. Eris taga Nueva Vizcaya ka din po no? No sir, taga Gadusala na po. Ah, taga Gadusala. Akala ko lang connection diyan, may pa pawala-wala daw diyan eh, di ba? Um sir, eh nagbo-boarding na po ako sa Tugigaraw sir kasi ang hirap po dun sir. Ah, sa dito ko na sa Tugigaraw. Yes po sir. Okay, very good. Okay. So Uh, yes, that, that ends our discussion. Thank you for all the insights and sharing. I hope that the others would also do the same, just like what Aries, uh, Laila, Maika, okay, and these people are doing that they are sharing. Because that's only that's also one way for me to learn about you, to know more about you by sharing your thoughts, by sharing your insights about the lesson. So thank you for attending this video conference. Please take note that there would be no there would be no assessment for this week. Okay, kasi masyadong kailangan natin talakayin lahat ng mga lahat ng mga primary courses na ito kasi next week na ang inyong prelim exam. Okay, so uh, wala mo ng assessment ngayon. Okay, ang assessment ay mangyari after the prelim exam. Pero may mga quiz, okay? May quiz, eh, may quiz siguro after, uh, may quiz siguro next week on Tuesday. Okay, 
about the things that we will finish, we will be finishing discussing this week. Okay, maliwanag po ba iyon? Yes, sir. Yes, for sir. Okay, thank you, Mr. Iris, and Fiore, Serena, and Regidin. Thank you for uh, responding. Okay, so thank you for attending our video conference class. And because of that, may I request, uh, may I request uh, Eris to lead us the closing prayer. Okay, um, let us pray in the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord God, giver of wisdom, we praise and glorify your name. Lord, thank you po sa araw na ito. Salamat po sa uh, binigay niyong pagkakataon sa amin na may matutunan na naman po. Um, we pray for the coming days na sana maging okay na po lahat. This we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Salamat sa marami. Magkita-kita muli tayo sa susunod na pagkikita. That is on 23. Okay. Goodbye, Bye, sir. Everyone. Thank you, sir. sir. Goodbye, Thank sir. You Thank you, sir. sir. Goodbye, Bye. sir. Thank you. Bye. Bye, sir. Bye, sir. Bye, bye. Bye, Ruby.